This is Neil Ratnar Rock Doc here on WDST Radio Woodstock with another episode of This Week in Rock with support from Transcend Dental and my friend, the amazing dentist and rock star Bruce Milner. Visit Transcend Dental, his stunning new office at 2 Maverick Road on the corner of Maverick Road and Route 375. From August 15th through 18th, 1969, the Woodstock Music and Art Fair took place on Max Yasker's Dairy Farm in Bethel, New York, approximately 40 miles from here. The country was deep into the Vietnam War, a conflict that most people of my generation vehemently opposed. The 60s was also the era of the Civil Rights Movement, with multiple sometimes violent protests, and the Woodstock Festival was an opportunity for a troubled generation to escape into music and spread a message of unity and peace. 32 acts performed for more than 450,000 people, and the festival has become widely regarded as a pivotal moment in popular music, a defining event for the baby boomers, and a term that became synonymous with the counterculture of the 1960s. Promoter Bill Graham, a Latin music aficionado, had been a fan of the group Santana from its inception and became the band's manager. By the summer of 1969, Santana was beginning to gain an audience on the West Coast. However, they were virtually unknown on the East Coast, and Graham had to convince Woodstock promoter Michael Lang to add them to the bill. When Santana arrived at the site, the first person Carlos saw was Jerry Garcia. The two had a discussion about the times they would perform, and since Carlos thought he had 10 or even 12 hours before going on stage, as he explains, he accepted Jerry's offer of a tab of LSD, which he immediately ingested. And as soon as I took it, it was like, <laughs> everything became uh, another dimension, you know? And, and then I see this face coming and saying, if you don't play now, you're not gonna play at all. You need to go on right now. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> okay, you know, I thought I had six, seven hours to recuperate from because you know it's like kind of like a roller coaster you know you, you go through this and so I said okay take a deep breath and, and and I discover a mantra back then without even knowing God please help me help me to stay in tune <laughs> and in time and I promise I'll never do this again Sure. So <laughs> I went up there, and I, you know, and, and so when I started playing, of course, the the guitar neck, uh, the neck and the guitar started wavering, you know, mm. like a snake, and I was like, oh, uh oh. <laughs> uh, so I just started making faces because I was trying to keep it tame, you know, I was trying to keep it from slithering all over the place. When I first saw the movie. Jimi Hendrix lady took me to see it. He had left that morning for Maui. So she says, hey man, what are you doing? He says, oh, you know, we just got, we got a day off. Well, go unpack your stuff man, and come. I want to take you to this movie. What movie? I says, what's that? What's that? They made a movie? Yeah, he says, wait till you see it. He says, we saw it last night with Jimi, and when you guys came on, you guys freaked them out. Yeah. I go, really? He goes, he loves your energy, man. He loves your... As one of those who saw Santana for the first time at Woodstock, I couldn't agree more. Okay, let's listen. Live from the stage of Woodstock 69, Santana and Soul Sacrifice. <laughs> 